Welcome to ITIL Foundation 2011 Overview, Part 3. Now we're in service operation, the fourth and considered the most important of the stages, especially if you're not a startup. And this is where you actually put the product in the customer's hands. You have a robust baby now. The goal is to coordinate and carry out the activities and processes required to deliver and manage services at agreed levels to business users and customers. The service operation processes are mostly seen from the service desk or help desk side. And we often look at them from the user point of view. For example, request fulfillment says, the user says, I need a portal community created. That would be a request for something. Incident management is when something isn't working right. And the user might say something like, I can't access the portal. Access management says that they can't access something due to security limitations. So they might say, I need a network ID created. And then event management is generally not from the user point of view, but from someone who's monitoring uh, and seeing what's going on with the, with the system. And that's where you might have an error alert, for example, running out of disk space. Again, these are all from the, the service pro uh, provider help desk or service desk. Now outside of that, this last process is outside of the help desk or service desk, and that is problem management. For example, the portal is inaccessible to the organization. This is a cause of one or more incidents. A service operation process flow might look something like this. Again, our service desk would have event management, and an event is a change of state that has significance, an alert or notification. An incident, and that's an unplanned interruption or reduction to the quality of an IT service. So an event just means something has happened, incident means something isn't working right. The goal of the service desk is to restore service to normal as quickly as possible. And to do that, there's a seven step process, but notice the first four things, identify and log, categorize and prioritize before you ever diagnose. It's important to be able to identify and log it, categorize and prioritize it so that you can record what's happening, so that you have a good um, measurement of what's happening. And you can plan on this, you can, uh, based on priority, the priority matrix, and that includes impact plus urgency. We'll talk about that more in just a minute. Now, outside the service desk, there's problem management. This is the cause of one or more incidents, and it's responsible for further investigation. The goal here is to find and fix the problem, and that may take some time. The priority matrix measures impact and urgency. The impact is at the number of users influence the incident's effect on the business, whereas the urgency is the extent to which the resolution can bear delay. It's based on the SLA and the OLA. Those are fixed. Based on that, then you must determine what the, um, what the impact is. However, sometimes there's a life-threatening event and multiple divisions cannot conduct core businesses. This is called a major incident. This is outside the priority matrix, and that means all hands on deck fix that problem first. And then you can see that it's numbered and prioritized based on urgency and impact. So a one, you are going to resolve quicker than say a five. Service operation outcomes, again, there's lots of them, but the main one is performance reporting. Management reports that can be used to support event management and incident diagnosis and to identify improvements, achievements, and trends to know what's going on so that we can improve. And that takes us to the fifth and final life cycle stage, and that's called CSI, or Continual Service Improvement. And the goal here is to align IT services with changing business needs by identifying and implementing improvements to IT services that support business processes. You see, it's all about pushing that big rock uphill and making sure that it's constantly being improved. The CSI activities include CSI model and the seven step improvement process. Let's look at the CSI model first. You can see that it starts with what is the vision? And that's generally the uh, purview of the C-suite. Uh, uh, all those officers, that uh, their titles start with chief, <laughs> chief something. So they come up with the vision. And as employees, our job is to embrace that vision. And the tools used in that stage are the mission, the goals, and objectives. Then where are we now? You have to understand the current position. And to do that, you use baseline assessments, measurement to find out where are we now. Then where do we want to be? And that's when you want to determine priorities. With that, you use measurable targets. 
How do we get there? You have to know the CSI plan, and that's your service and process improvement. And then you have to measure, did we get there? You want to verify that goals were met using those measurements and metrics. You can see how important it is to measure in CSI. And then finally, how do we keep the momentum going? We want to embed and normalize gains. That's by putting the processes down in writing to create those process models. Remember Deming? The seven-step improvement process lays right over Deming, plan, do, check, act. And then the five life cycle stages lays right over that. Then we start with wisdom. So the first step of the seven-step improvement process is to be smart enough to know that there's a problem and identify the strategy for improvement. Then it's all about the data, starting to define what you will measure and collecting that data. In fact, ITIL suggests that poor or incomplete data is better than no data at all. So our goal is to start collecting data. Then process the data. When you process it, it turns it into information. Then you can analyze it. You can start asking questions of it. And when you can identify the who, what, when, where, why, and how, then it becomes knowledge. Then you can present and use the information and implement the improvement and push that wheel uphill. So how do we know what data to gather? What is the data that we're talking about? Well, remember, our capability body of knowledge, our ITIL framework, has 26 processes in it. So first, we look at those processes. And then within that, we look at our critical success factors, the what do you have to get right objects. These are considered critical success factors. You want two to five critical success factors, or CSS, per process. And then we have KPIs, or Key Performance Indicators. KPIs, you'd have two to five KPIs per CSF. And these are credible, measurable, and relevant metrics to measure achievement. You would measure your service metrics, technology metrics, and process metrics. And the outcomes of CSI are ongoing quality checks, where the quality is monitored and improved. This is an ongoing process that never stops. So what is service? It's a means of delivering value to customers by facilitating outcomes that the customer wishes without the customer having to assume ownership of costs or risks. It's kind of like turning on the water and expecting water to be there. That's a service. I don't know where the water comes from. I don't know about the infrastructure. All I know is that I pay my monthly bill and I get water. That's service. That service requires stakeholders, and the stakeholders could be a person with any interest in the organization, and that includes customers, the people who write the checks. It could be external users. Those are the people who use it but don't actually pay for it. And it could be suppliers, as well, of course, as internal users. So the trick of service management is to turn resources and capabilities. What are resources? Well, it's like saying human resources and the technology they use. The people and the resources they use. And what are capabilities? That's how well they use those resources. ITIL suggests that capabilities are even more important. That means how well you're trained, how well you know what you're doing, how well your team works together. But taking all of that information, those resources and capabilities, and turning it into something that the customer finds valuable because it has both utility, meaning fit for purpose, and warranty, fit for use. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.